Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we are going to try and fulfill the crew duration contract of 30 days. We already have two crew members on board our space station and uh, it looks like the clock is still ticking down even though we're away from them so that's a good sign but we'll probably be time warping uh, with them uh, while focused on the space station just to make sure that it gets fulfilled. Uh, what we are also going to be doing is testing KOS with some of our rockets. Uh, right now I've queued up the Nico 404 and Nico 606 and you can see I've got uh, 404C and 606C that means cargo version because both of those rockets were initially meant to lift our Kelly spacecraft and so uh, the, with the spacecraft it has the inner stage fairing uh, with, the, with the cargo it needs the proper fairing for it. So and we have two test tanks for each of those rockets and you see that the uh, building time is 30 days but then the second slot will eventually become the first slot so they'll be, both be done in less than 30 days. Uh, we could build a, a, another rocket and larger rockets but I, I want to hold off on that because it costs some money and we, we don't have a whole lot of funds. Uh, part of the reason for that is because we've got a lot of probes that are en route. Uh, we've got the bopper We've got the uh, two Phobos missions, Jupiter Orbiter 2 and Titan Shot, uh, two Titan Shots. Um, there's this Jovian 1 that's going to uh, hit an SOI change. I mean, with all those interplanetary probes, it's not surprising that our budget... I, you say, well, 1.49 million is not too little, but we have to keep a buffer for all sorts of things like this R&D building upgrade, right? Speaking of which, I've decided to finally add the mods that I intend to add to fill the slots all the way out here. So I'm out, well, some of them were already filled by like uh, Soviet engine pack. I mean, refined stage combustion is just normal stuff. But fusion rockets, well, now we have a magneto inertial fusion engine. It's not cheap. <laughs> it's 250,000 uh, just for that. Um, it says non-RP0, but I've made sure that as, okay, so this is from the KSP Interstellar Extended pack. And KSP Interstellar Extended doesn't have a realism overhaul configuration already built. But I've, I've looked at them and made sure that all the stuff is at least reasonable. And if I thought that a particular part looked reasonable, I put RO and pro progress on it. Otherwise, uh, sometimes I had to remove reaction wheels or resize things. Uh, that's about it. So RO in progress, you can see there, and uh, yeah, but they they're really expensive. I mean, if you take a look, uh, if you're worried about warp drives, uh, that's that's over here. Well, that's uh, 1.1 million, um, uh, and the unlock cost is not that much actually. Surprisingly enough, I might have to change that. Part of this is going to be experimenting and seeing um, what needs to be changed, but. Uh, these, by the way, you might not know that uh, they, they're not, uh, you can't just put one of them on and make a warp drive work. They have mass limitations and power requirements. So, yeah, it's, it's not simple. Uh, it, uh, having the 4.5 million here does not mean that you can automatically go to warp speed to anywhere. There are other requirements to them, and we'll get to that much, much later. <laughs> right now, we're over here, and we won't be getting to any of that for a while now. We'll probably get nuclear propulsion, because actually, um, NERVA was developed in the 60s, and we're already in 1973, so we should have NERVA by now. And we did not have Three Mile Island, so nobody got really, really afraid about nuclear stuff just yet. At least that's that's my story and I'm sticking to it. With that, uh, let's just go to our crew on board the space station and time warp for 30 days and fulfill that one contract and then bring them back down and uh, then test some of these with KOS. Actually thinking about it, I would like to have continuous habitation of this space station. And probably after 30 days we have to bring them, well, no, it just says uh, stay in space for, for 30 days doesn't say anything about bringing them back down. Okay, let's time warp through the th 30 days. Then we're going to launch another mission to occupy the station and then bring them back down. Uh, so, continuous habitation. Uh, the station has uh, two years of supplies for two crew members. So, we'll just send another two up. And that should be fine. We won't have to resupply it or anything. 
plenty of room for everybody. So uh, here I go with the time warp. Okay, well we have completed the 30 days. I did have to run the fuel cells, in fact they're on right now. Well, one, one set of fuel cells. Actually we've got quite a lot of them. Just the one in this Gemini adapter equipment section, we've actually got like 10 fuel cells on here, which might be excessive. But yeah, uh, just running that one fuel cell for enough time to make sure our electric charge didn't dip too low, below like 10%. Uh, reduction. Uh, well, we've sort of eliminated most of our liquid hydrogen supply, most of our liquid oxygen supply too, so the next crewed vessel should probably bring up some more hydrogen and oxygen, uh, which shouldn't be too much. I mean, uh, the, in one of these big tanks you can contain quite a lot of that. But yeah, I think I should get uh, a new crew together and send them up here, and then we can bring these two back down. They've already fulfilled the mission. Um, yeah, looks good. Wow, now you might wonder whether that 30-day uh, crew duration record was worth it. 568,000 funds, so definitely worth it. And some and some reputation points too, which we still need. So yeah, uh, now, we, now we're up to 2 million, so yeah, it was a pretty good deal to fulfill that particular contract. And we should probably fulfill the next one too, which is, um... Let's see, what, what, what more do they have of that sort of idea? Well, there's this crew count record of 10. Um, we need a crew vehicle that can send three Kerbals up at a time at least, before we can do that. And uh, crew duration record of 60 days. Maybe, maybe for our next uh, crew we should aim for the 60 day stay. Actually, it's, it's counting down for our current crew already. Hmm. Maybe they could stay longer, and we could add some more crew there. We'll see. Uh, the We still need to bring supplies for the fuel cells. Not for the food, water, and oxygen, though. But yeah. It's it's an interesting possibility. I wonder how much that's worth. Um, One million. I think that's quite worth it. Yeah. I think we should do that. How much is this one? Only 293,000, but I mean... It'd be interesting to have 10 Kerbals up there in the first place. Alright. Okay, I'm trying to launch the test tank on the Nico 404C uh, for the KOS test, but it had repairs required on the side there. I didn't. I don't know if you saw in red, so now I'm confused. I wasn't going to start recording until it uh, was on the launch pad, but then I saw that and I decided to make a note of it. Well, uh... Launchpad definitely does need repairs, but the question is whether it's gonna stop us from launching, isn't it? Well, I guess we're about to find out. Let's load up the script in KOS. So, edit Nico 404. I'm gonna copy basically my well, this is my normal Falcon 9 script which I use as the basis for all other scripts. Oh, save failed. Um, archive. Okay. Well, we need to go back to Space Center and come back in order to to activate the archive. That's the only way to... Anyway, it's not the only way, but it's the only way I can figure out how to make this work out for me. So, maybe we can repair the launch pad with it on it. I don't know. If I can fool it, I really don't want to repair for 60,000. Okay, well, okay, here's the deal. Um, can we... Can we have indestructible facilities? Okay, I'll pay the 60,000, but we have indestructible facilities from now on, because it just randomly explodes with no good reason. Okay. So I'll do this repair. Please remove them. Uh, okay, I'll repair it after we launch. Okay, well, here we go again. Edit. Nico 404. Alright, and now we're on archive. Save. I need to plug in the thrust to weight ratios of this, which are not too different from a, from a Falcon 9. Falcon 9 had 1.23, this is 1.37 for the start, 
The second stage thrust to weight ratio is 1.12. We're carrying, uh, I think, 15 ton tank with this. And the upper stage ends up at 6.59. There are fairings, and we would like to stage them. And the roll, it's this number that goes in here. So 270, 270, that's fine. Okay. Otherwise, we'll just see how it goes. I think I'll be better off if uh, it starts its turn sooner rather than later. That uh, This determines when it starts to turn. 500 meters divided by the initial thrust weight ratio to the third power. So this will basically make it start turning immediately. Okay. That'll save some wobbles initially. Okay, I'm going to throw it down myself so that it doesn't automatically ignite once we get up there. And let's see what happens. Run Nico 404. Okay, program's loaded, which means 10 seconds. Uh, I guess we'll keep it up just so it, we see what it's doing. Here we go, ignition. Oh, long pause there, but alright, we're up. It's got all the necessary calculations built in. But uh, the further away something strays from being a Falcon 9, the more peculiar the situation is. The two things that lead to exceptional situations are boosters and, of course, uh, low thrust to weight ratio upper stages. But as you can see, it's naturally following the surface vector very well here through the speed of sound. But eventually it's going to start tilting lower and that's because it's going to start shifting towards the orbit velocity. Looking good so far. The question mark is how KOS would handle some sort of engine issue. It is directed to thrust limits uh, so that the thrust weight ratio does not exceed 4 G's. So it will throttle down if it gets to that. There it is. It's not a smooth throttle down because it doesn't assume that the engine smoothly throttles. Not all engines, even though they might have a throttle range, that doesn't mean they smoothly throttle. Sometimes you just go from one throttle to another. So it does that instead. Set. Go oh, awkward pause here. And that's a much longer pause than I wanted there. We'll have to do something about that, but it's all right for now. The long pause also results in this wiggly because it, during that pause, it deviated away from where it was supposed to be. The shorter the pause is, the less wiggles we get. Not happy that we're still wobbling a bit, but we should have fairing separation at 120 kilometers. There we go. I'll just manually get the antennae out. Looking good so far. Uh, it might not be holding its whole trajectory in check though. This upper stage might be way too powerful. This is even throttled down now. Oh well, these don't throttle, do they? Yeah, these are the NK31s that don't, or 39s, I forget which one that doesn't throttle. It'd be better to have throttling engines here. We'll see how well it does, but you can see its apoapsis is going way high now. Yep, 
Yeah, the apoapsis went out of control. Well, at least that stage will deorbit. That's a positive, I suppose. Oh, I should put on RCS. These don't gimbal. Uh oh. Why is it turning this way? Oh, it actually wants to. Uh, fair enough. I think this is due to the whole apoapsis situation. There we go. Well, it's satisfied. At least it sort of got it into orbit. But yeah, we'll need to tune it a little bit to make sure the apoapsis doesn't go crazy. What I need for it to do is just to pitch down more. It, it was limited. Uh, the way the script is written, the higher the acceleration, the less it's allowed to pitch down because, you know, yeah, every little bit of pitch has a great effect. But I'll just uh, take that out and let it pitch down up to 15 degrees and that'll probably help the whole trajectory thing out. Uh, well, now it doesn't even know where to go, so let's just point prograde. And uh, we'll have to see what to do with this later on. This will just be an emergency sort of thing. It's not really in line with the station or the moon, but not too far off. Let's see. Uh, 12 degrees off from the moon. I don't think it has any locked fuel, so it wouldn't be able to transfer much fuel to the moon if necessary. But then again, it has a high apoapsis right now. Okay, you know what? Uh, just, just drift. That's too much RCS firing. Okay, well, I'm going to leave this thing be, and we'll try it out with the other rocket. But I'll make the modifications uh, to the script that I intend to do for this rocket for the other one as well. So that hopefully it'll result in a better orbit. Okay, and so we have the Nico 606, obviously a little bit fatter than the 404, and we are going to do the same basic idea. I'm going to copy the script, now slightly edited. We have repaired the launch pad for 60,000 funds, hopefully for the last time. Uh, I, I trust when it says indestructible facilities, it means indestructible facilities. This has a payload of 21 tons on it. Let me just double check. And I need the thrust weight ratios as well. Uh, 21.5 tons and 6.87. So very similar to the Nico 404, obviously. Very, very much related rockets. I'm worried about the delay between the separation and the ignition. But we'll have to see about that. Off it goes. Okay, we are now past the speed of sound. No current issues. This sort of reminds me of a big black arrow, I think. Of course, no red fairing in this case, but the general shape of it. Sort of reminiscent. Okay, getting ready for separation. Up oh, and throttle down. And ignition, please. Oh, come on. Ignite before it. Come on. Ignite. The guy got unsettled. boy. Oh, whoa, whoa, what, what, what happened there? Uh, apparently we lost the avionics unit. I didn't realize it couldn't be attached there, I guess. 
Okay, well, we lost the avionics, dude. I don't think... I wonder if KOS even obeys that, actually. But clearly, uh, this version of the Nico 66 to 606C has a flaw. So we'll have to fix that. That said, it doesn't seem to have hurt the situation much. Okay, fairing separation on schedule. Plenty of Delta V to get us to orbit. The question is whether the orbit will be reasonably restrained or goes sort of out of control on the apoapsis side. Well, sort of unfortunately, there hasn't been any engine issues so far. So that means we can't really test whether KOS will deal with that properly. Oh, now avionics is unlocking controls. Well, uh, well it doesn't seem to have uh, made much of a difference, honestly. It seems like KOS can circumvent the avionics limits. Still gonna go a bit out of control on apoapsis. It's supposed to be going to 270 kilometers. We have basically the same situation, except at least it got to orbit on this stage instead of using the payload. Well, program ended. All right. All is down. Separation. And this one's all ready to go. So, uh, well, at least with KOS, our whole curse of the fuel depot issue can be resolved, because uh, both of our fuel depots got to orbit. We, we call them test tanks, but still, same difference. Alright, uh, the next thing I want to do is launch some new crew for the space station, but I don't know if I can do that rendezvous in this episode. We'll have to see about the timing. I'm running out of time here, but let's see. Let's try and launch a new crew. Alright, here we are. We do have to line up with the station. And I'm not going to entrust uh, our Kerbals to launch script just yet because it does need some work. Uh, though this is a Nico 404. SAS on. And ignition. And launch. And we have Lara Kerman and Staley Kerman. Lara is the pilot, Staley is a scientist. Okay, we are now past the speed of sound. Okay, getting ready for the end of the first stage. Alright, nominal burn of the first stage, set. Escape system separation. Okay, trying to approach as close as possible. And it looks like crawling down is a good idea here. Okay, well, the closest approach distance is looking better and better. We can probably finish orbit with our capsule. We're deliberately overburning, and there we go. Close approach distance reached a minimum of 42 kilometers. We stopped at 44. And currently our relative velocity to the target is 304 meters per second, currently 640 kilometers away. We'll meet the target uh, at the closest approach distance in 18 minutes, and then we'll use the capsule to lift our orbit as necessary. I mean, technically, we could probably keep this stage around if it has reignitions. No, this version does not have reignitions. So that's all right. We have enough fuel in the capsule to do all the things anyway. All right. So yeah, let's separate. 
This will of course re-enter as would be preferable. Okay, settling the fuel down. Oh, the little nose cap took out one of our panels. Shoot. Well, that's just great. Oh, shoot. Uh, lost the target. Uh, Lara and Staley look okay. And we are closing in on the station. Okay, point towards the target, and we should be set to go. Actually, let's control from this side now, where we have to dock. And we don't need the solar panels out anymore. Oh, they don't retract. I need to replace them with retractable ones. Just safer that way. We've already lost one as it is. Okay, currently approaching the station. We are closing... At 130 meters now, it says closest approach distance 2.7 meters. We're at 1.7 meters per second. As far as the 60 day timer is concerned, it's definitely restarted since this launch. And it looks like if I try and launch something, uh, it'll reset the timer. So that's how it works. Uh, Closing the game, going to Space Center doesn't reset the timer, but launching something does. So in order to make it work, we're going to have to not launch anything new. It's possible that separating a spacecraft from the station would also have the effect of resetting the timer, but I'm not sure. Currently we are running the fuel cells, and it's an interesting point. I've got enough hydrogen and oxygen to replenish the fuel cell fuel on the station, but... We're, we're now going to have double the number of Kerbals and double the number of Capsules. So I'm not too sure this is enough fuel cell fuel. If I want to replenish that further, that's another launch which would reset the 60 day timer. The other option is to bring uh, two of the Kerbals down. You know, uh, do the crew rotation. But maybe I should just have a supply vessel launch here. Unfortunately, I didn't think of uh, putting the supply vessels on the tests that we already launched. Those are just fuel. They don't have hydrogen and oxygen in. Okay, that's pretty lined up. Yep, very lined up indeed. Come on, magnetism. Yes! Alright, we're all docked. So now we have two spacecraft at our space station, four Kerbals on board. Um, we'll see how long we can keep them. I don't know. Yeah, probably I need to send another resupply vessel. I mean, just with hydrogen and oxygen, though. Maybe we just need a permanent larger hydrogen-oxygen container. Maybe with some more uh, solar panels. I, oh, actually, what would be really helpful is a huge solar panel array because currently we clearly don't have enough solar panels to accommodate the Kerbals on the station. So maybe that'll be the plan for, to, uh, did I say tomorrow, and uh, the next episode. So we'll see about that. Uh, with this, uh, I think I'll wrap it up and I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.